Hello, I'm Phil De Fontenay, and this is the Motivational Mastermind. In this episode, I'll cover six unique ways to regain control of a bad day. These methods have worked for me and many of my clients. I have no doubt they'll work for you too. I hope you'll use them to handle your life. The aim of this podcast is to motivate, inspire, and empower you to joyfully live your life with passion, enthusiasm, and love, and to connect with your true nature to be the best that you can be. Your mind is a computer. All you need is to learn how to use the software, install new apps, and debug the system. Motivational Mastermind. Six unique ways to regain control of a bad day. Everyone has bad days. They're a normal part of life. I guess it's safe to assume that most of us lead somewhat hectic lives, especially if you live and work in the city. Life can get pretty crazy and random at times, right? Humans, for the most part, are resilient. They deal with stuff and just keep going. Some people are better at dealing with difficulties than others. But at some point, even the toughest of us will start to show some wear and tear. We get a few chinks in the old armor. We can't quite seem to bounce back as fast as we used to. We begin to react negatively to the little things that bother us. At this point, it would be wise to just step back and take a breather. We need to take some time for quiet reflection about what went wrong and what went right. But far more important, we should learn to read the signs and prepare for any flack coming our way. Prevention will help you prepare for those bad days. It'll help cushion the blows so you're in better condition to face any challenges. These six unique ways will help you regain control after a bad day, but only if you take the time and put them into action. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that nothing will work unless you take consistent action. Or maybe you do need me to tell you that. These methods are great for something you may be stuck in right now or used as a daily preventative to stop negativity building up. Pick the ones that work for you and practice them daily. Number one, self-reflection. Because of the fast pace of modern life, we don't get time for self-reflection. It's what we need to help us solve the issues we face in our day-to-day living. By using self-reflection, we can learn from our past successes and failures This allows for greater understanding about ourselves. Doing this will help you become more efficient. How? By making you more productive in the areas that count. We waste too much time on recurring problems and issues. Regular reflective thinking helps us solve these issues faster. It would be an interesting exercise to work out how much time we do waste on these issues every day, wouldn't it? Besides, reflective thinking doesn't have to take a long time. You just need to set aside the time every day to do it. It's consistency that's the key. Make it a daily task. I like to do reflective thinking at the end of the day so it clears my mind and improves my sleep. As we're going through life, We just don't get the chance to inspect events when they happen. We're emotionally caught up in our lives and whatever else is going on. Reflective thinking allows us to view past situations objectively. We gain a true perspective of what actually happened. But what's more important is that it gives us insight into how to correct it, improve it, or strengthen it. We don't want to just look at mistakes. We also want to look at what went right and why, so we can strengthen our good qualities. 
Self-reflection is quite simple. But like I said, we need to be consistent with it. Set aside time for it in a place you won't get distracted. You can just start scanning over your day from the beginning to the end. It's what I do. And then when you find something good that happened, you strengthen it. Look over how it occurred, how it made you feel, and so on. When you find something that went wrong or made you feel bad, take a closer look, inspect it, and notice how you reacted, how it made you feel. What could you have done different to create a better outcome, a better result? Use this for any area or situation in your life that needs to be inspected and resolved or learned from. It's a great way to get to know yourself. Here's some example questions you can ask yourself to get you started. What happened today that I could have handled better than I did? Was there anything in my day that made me feel uncomfortable at all? Did I do anything today? that I should have done differently? Did I react to anything today that was unnecessary? You get the idea, right? Doing self-reflection can help you become happier, more in control, and more intuitive. Number two, mind writing. I call this method mind writing. That's because you write down anything and everything that comes into your mind, no matter how silly or insignificant it seems. Get a pen and plenty of paper. Sit in a quiet place where you won't get distracted for 20 to 30 minutes. Yes, that means leaving the phone somewhere else or turned off. No multitasking. Now, just start writing about every feeling or consideration that pops into your mind. And I mean every idea, every bad word, every bad thought or criticism. All kinds of emotions might come up. You just keep writing them down. Don't edit it. Don't try to keep your writing neat. Don't think too much. Just put what pops into your mind onto the paper. It's like you've got this direct link to your mind and it just pours out on the paper. Keep writing everything in this way until you feel better. You might smile, start laughing, or feel lighter about the situation, person, or event. Trust me, this works if it's done well. I've used this with many clients who had incredible results. It'll work for you too. Number three, welcome the feeling. This method's called welcome the feeling. When most people hit a bad feeling, the first thing they try to do is stop it or push it away. This never works and just sticks you in it even more. Try this way instead and see if it works for you. You might resist this idea at first, but hear me out and give it a try. When you feel bad, try welcoming the feeling, embracing it as if it's a long-lost friend you haven't seen for a while. I want you to just dive right into the center of that feeling and really feel it. I mean, really feel it. The key here is to stay in the feeling and not let yourself bounce out and run away from it. Swim around in it like it's a warm spa on a cold day. Visualize yourself enjoying swimming in that feeling. Keep yourself right in the center of it. Do this as long as you need and keep yourself right in the center of the feeling. If you start to push it away or resist it, just dive back into the center of it. Do it long enough. It doesn't take long and you'll begin to feel it disappearing, more like dissolving. You'll start to feel lighter and lighter. You may even smile or start laughing. Just be aware that by doing this, it can suddenly disappear in an instant. That's a good thing. Keep using this method, and you'll get better at handling these negative emotions. You don't even need to know what the source of them is. Of course, you'll start to see where they originate from. But you don't have to for this to work. Number four, fully focused, cleansing breath. Make sure not to overthink this one. It's super simple. And the key here is to be 100% focused on the breath as you do this. With this breathing technique, we also use the power of the mind to visualize. 
This can help release a lot of negative buildup in the mind and body. Let's call it negative charge that can build up and affect our emotions and well-being. We use the breath to strengthen our visualization. Together, they allow us to breathe positive in and breathe negative out. It's simple, but if it's done long enough in a relaxed and focused way, it can help us release anything we're stuck in. Negativity that could be affecting us. The first step is to find a quiet place where you won't get disturbed for 10 to 15 minutes. Next, you close your eyes and try to let go of any tension in the body. Just scan around briefly and let it all go. Then, put your attention on your abdomen and lightly place your hands there. Begin to breathe slowly into your belly as if you're filling up a balloon. Breathe in through your nose and out from your mouth. Take three slow, deep breaths without straining. Make sure to breathe out completely on exhale. Then just relax and let the breathing flow calmly and naturally. Now visualize a big, bright golden white sun in front of you. Don't worry if you can't see it. Just imagine it's there. Now breathe slowly and deeply into your belly. Imagine you're breathing in this beautiful golden white light from the sun in front of you. It fills your whole body and the space about one meter all around it. See it filling every part of you, every cell, until you're glowing this bright golden white color. Feel its healing power all through you and around you. Now, as you breathe out, you imagine all the negativity as black mass, kind of like a dirty black cloud. Visualize this black mass getting sucked out of your body like there's a giant vacuum cleaner there. Visualize it flowing with the breath out of your mouth into the bright golden white sun in front of you. This negative black mass turns into beautiful sparks of energy as it touches the golden white light of the sun. It transforms back into this wonderful golden white energy. It's purified, just as you are becoming purified of all the negativity in and around you. Now keep repeating this for at least 10 minutes or until you feel refreshed and revitalized. End off with a feeling of gratefulness to this golden white healing sun. Feel thankful to it for taking away negativity and filling you with a new vitality. You might get issues with others or painful emotion coming up while doing this. Just release them through the breath the same way. They'll resolve too as you continue the process. Number five, what can I be grateful for? Because of the fast pace of modern day living, we can fail to notice the many good things coming into our lives. Maybe they're small or insignificant or just too familiar, and so we don't notice them. It's time to notice them. If we don't, we risk losing the real purpose of life and everything becoming mundane. When this happens, I guarantee that the bad or negative aspects of our lives will gain more focus. Don't let that happen. Practicing gratitude shifts your focus to the positive flow in your life. This creates a sense of accomplishment, a reason for existence. Even a wealthy man who isn't grateful for what he's received spends his time worrying that others are trying to take it away from him. Be grateful for everything good that happens to you, no matter how small or insignificant it seems. Be grateful for lessons you learn along the way. Be grateful for all the people that have come into your life and care about you. Do this every day and keep a gratitude journal to write all your grateful thoughts in. I believe that writing in a journal has a better effect than just thinking about it. It keeps you focused on what you're grateful for longer and keeps you in the moment. Being grateful for the good that happens to you brings more of the same into your life. Practice gratitude every day. Number six, mindful walking. Walking can be wonderfully therapeutic if we use it in the right way. It's not just walking. We do that every day. But there's a better way to walk 
that can dramatically change how you're feeling. For a start, whenever you walk anywhere, walk as though you're heading to the greatest place ever. Yeah, even if it's just the bathroom. Always walk with your back straight, your shoulders back, your chest out a little, and your head up. Walk as if you own the space around you. Walk with total confidence. Imagine how a super confident person walks. Do they walk all slouchy and dragging their feet? No, of course not. They walk with their head up and their body straight. Just changing your posture can make a huge difference to how you feel. What do most people do when they go for a walk? Well, these days they're focused on their phones. But what I mean is they're usually stuck in their thoughts. Their attention isn't focused on their environment. This can be a little dangerous. Plus, they're missing out on a good way to increase their awareness and well-being. I know that may sound strange, but many people these days spend most of their time focused on objects that are close to them. Objects like their computers, the TV, other people, and of course their phones. Try this the next time you go for a walk. Keep your back straight, your shoulders back, your chest out a little, and your head up. Don't drag your feet, but take purposeful steps like you're going to the most amazing place ever. Then, as you're walking, continue shifting your focus with full attention. Look at something far away in the distance and notice as much as you can about it. It's color, it's shape, distance, and so on. Then, shift your focus to something closer to you and notice everything you can about it. Next, shift your focus again to something a further distance away, maybe down the street a little. Notice everything you can about that as well. Keep shifting your focus like this for 15 to 20 minutes as you walk. Objects far away, objects close, and objects at various distances from you. If you do this well, you'll notice your awareness of your surroundings becoming sharper. Your mind will get clearer and you'll feel more awake. But also don't feel surprised if you feel nicely relaxed and have the best night's sleep ever. These simple methods done right can free you from negative emotion. Use them well and use them often to change your life. We're all on the same journey. I wish you the best life possible. Okay, that's the end of the show today. I hope you're feeling on track and motivated. If you like the methods in today's episode, please share them with others. They'll appreciate it. To find links or recommendations mentioned in this podcast, please visit the site at motivationalmasterminds.com. I hope you'll come and join me here every week. This is Phil DeFontenay. See you later. Stay motivated. Stay motivated.